anyone else feel that way? Have the same happening? Once you pop, you can't stop. Ugh. And then comes an evil monthly newsletter from the evil nursery, Gross Rechner Euchideen, which happens to be one of my favorite evil nurseries. And then you look at their prices and their discounts. And then you think, hang on a second, what about all those orchids you were looking at, you know, over the last 12 months that you didn't buy? And then you go into their web page, you know, just to check. Nothing else, just to check. Because those orchids that you didn't buy like 12 months ago or 18 months ago, you found a little bit pricey and then you bought something else that was a bit more shiny at that time for a better price. And then next step is, oh, you see they're still available for the same price as they were 12, 18 months ago. And then you're like, oh, then there's a discount. And now that you have all the other shiny ones that you were looking for, the other ones are still available and they're now 18, 12 months older, maybe more established. And then you're thinking, oh, now maybe this is a good price. And then you're thinking climate. And you're going, oh, I'm going into the cooler part of the year, so I can get these. You know where this is going. <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. I did it, yes. Um, once I did it, one time, it's like there's a process until you hold on and slam on the brakes again. But I, I went to the Großrechner Euchideen page with their evil newsletter guiding me and I got bought myself some more ripiculous lelias and then something else and I put the packing slip away but I don't remember exactly but uh, yeah this is um, my speculation this is what I was hoping for to happen and let's see which one this is because there was another thought I had while I was looking is that if there have been shipments from Brazil to Europe, maybe other nurseries have bought other things I didn't exactly go for at the time, for example, with Floralia. So I speculated maybe to see if they got something else and then I saw all these other ones I had been keeping an eye on and hadn't pulled the trigger on. But look at this now. This is the Lelia Lucasiana. It's a ripiculous one. No surprises there then. But isn't she pretty? Of course, I do not know what the root system is like, but we will find out eventually. And I, but I do like the fact that she is so established. Now I'm trying to think whether, no, in, in Felsiae. Lucasiana is a long peep or long yip, something like that, long jeep. I don't know. But they are very, very pink with like a yellow trumpet flower. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful plant? This is what I call good quality. I love it. So let's uh, put this aside first and uh, dig in for the next one. So all these are going like, some say warm to cool growing. They can stay outside in the winter if I get them all to look the way the first one did. And uh, there's a cold grower in here, which is fine. I can get that established over the winter as well. It can stay outside. Um, I don't want to squash anything. <gasps> Ooh. I hope you can hear me and my the wind is not blowing everything away. Oh, look at her. Oh, careful. Careful with the skizzers. 
careful with the scissors. This is um, Lelia Diana or Day's Lily. I'll face away from the wind. I hope it protects the mic a bit. Day's Lily, Lelia Diana. Now I've seen on the internet that uh, they always bring up Humila with the uh, Lelia Diana. But I do think they are two different things. I'm not entirely sure. So if somebody knows, then I would be very, very happy to be corrected. Or if you could just give me that information because I can't seem to make head nor tail. Because I know that Grossrecht Noah Hidin, if they thought they had a Pumilla, they would label her as a Pumilla and not a Diana. And Diana has been on their list in their on the internet in their web shop for oh, as long as I can remember. I never pulled the trigger with her because the flowers are either reflex or they are cupped. So they never really open flat or anything, but they're very big blooms and they can range from a dark pink with a dark, dark lip to a light mauve with a dark lip. So I'm not entirely sure which one I have here, but she is very, very pretty and a new growth. So that is great. Yeah, love, love the quality of this. Oh, two out of two. I am spoiled. I spoiled myself. Let's hope this keeps going. These people, I love Großrechner Orchidin. Get another little one out. I bought uh, Endfeld CI, which has very tall spikes and then three or four little yellow blooms on the end. So the spikes are like three times the size of the orchid <laughs> when she starts to bloom, which is kind of fun because all the other ones are kind of compact and they stick to the plant. And then there's an Enfeldsii that does the opposite. But this one is Sincorana. And I think Sincorana is the really cold growing one. So it should be interesting to see what happens in the summer. But at least for the ones that have arrived now, they can stay outside all throughout the winter, which is great. But isn't that, oh, with root tips and everything. Not buds, but oh, oh, yes. I can really work with this. We are going to have ourselves a marathon repot. Fantastic. So that was Sincorana and Let's go, let's see if I can find all the reticulus to get them together as one. And I think I'm going to probably make a mistake here with regards to keeping them together as one because these pots are quite big. Hmm, don't squish it. Just unpack it, then you'll know. Doesn't matter if they're all in one. That's just sort of the little bit of the OCD coming out in me that I like to Everything has to have an order, you know, but let's have a look. Who are you? Oh, <laughs> hello. I can see by the leaf. I just needed some confirmation in case I babble without reason. I see the leaf and it's gorgeous. This is Dawiana. Aurea. And when I saw that they had the Dawiana Aurea, I went and said, yes, I can grow Dawiana in my preferred setup because the one I have now for at least like a year is doing superbly and has just been up-potted, which gave me confidence to get the Aurea. Now she is far away from blooming, but she is a beautiful, healthy looking orchid. And that's all we need really, unless we mess it up. 
but uh, oh, she's like three, four years away from blooming. But look at her. Look at that growth. Oh, yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You've got big brother in the shelf to the right. This is promising. Now, I just don't want to say that I'm going to repot her immediately. There's another growth back there being hidden by bark. Eesh. Let's take off the top layer because I don't want to put her into my tub with nutrients and have all this floating up around. But uh, it would be interesting to see. Look at that. There is a new growth. Oh, that is awesome. Am I even in focus? Am I even concentrating on what I'm doing here? Yeah. <laughs> ah, love it. Let's get rid of some of this bark. Make it easy. If push comes to shove and I'm not comfortable with repotting her until I see new roots, this being a warm to hot grower, um, she's gonna stay in this pot and until such a time that I feel it's going to be all right to transition her. It'll just take a little bit more of pHing because this is obviously a different media to what I normally use. But um, that's okay. I can do that. That'll be fun. Keep me busy throughout the winter. And the next one I got, I don't... Do I even remember? I know I'm missing my Entfelsii. But as a Rapiculus, I would have suspected it to be kind of small. So what else did I go for? Oh, yes. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> ah, hello. Wrong time of year for this, but she was the one that was on offer. And I thought, now I'm going to take the plunge. She has been, um, she used to be like 35 or almost 40 euros. This is Phalaenopsis violacea cerula. And she was always so expensive. I wasn't gonna, you know, I mean, like a Crucero do Sul, blooming size, $35. Okay, that's like 32 euros. And I'm like, I can do that. Somewhat kind of justifies it. But the Violacea Cerula, I always, I always shied away from because she was, I, I found it quite pricey. And then not knowing exactly if I can transition her, being a foul, even if it's a summer bloomer and I'm quite good at those, you know, all these doubts creep into your mind and you say, no, that's not worth it, not the risk. But now she dropped to 25 euros. That was what I saw in the newsletter, which prompted me to <clears throat> investigate, <laughs> for lack of a better word. And here she is. So I thought I was going to get, you know, a mediocre plant because if they're on sale, then you know what's left is what's left and they're trying to get rid of them. But she's fine. She's got a curly whirly leaf, which is okay. Matches all the other ones that have curly whirly leaves because of how I've been taking care of them. And if they grow through the winter, then I get curly whirly leaves. But she's got a new root coming and I think we can transition her Sasahivi. Not today, but look at this. Look. Violacea cerula, which is awesome. And I think I can work with this. The media is a little bit wet and I'm glad they did have it. It's not super wet. It's, you know, on the moist side, which is good. Uh, there's a little brown thing in there. I don't think that's a problem though. So I hope I can make her happy and get her to grow well here. That's great. I really want to make this one happy. I've been meaning for to get one like this, but you know, 40 euros, um, yeah. And uh, Entfelsii, are you bigger than I thought you were? Hmm. Let's check and see, let's check and see. I'm a bit concerned about the wind and my Dawiana there. I don't need the flopping flopping going on. There she is. 
Oh, welcome! Welcome! <laughs> oh, these, are, these are my stocking fillers. <laughs> the ones, you know, I have pocket rockets. Yes, I keep saying that. Now I know what it means, but I stick with it. And these are my stocking fillers, the Rapiculus Lelias. Ah! You're bigger than I thought. Now, I don't know, obviously, what they would have looked like a year to 18 months ago. I have no comparison because I didn't, I didn't buy them. But if I would like to venture a little bit to the point of, I told you so, I'm just glad that they're still around for me to buy. Now we've got some thing on the bark there. Uh, we'll get some air in there. <laughs> get this. Look at how beautiful this orchid is. <gasps> oh, gross fresh no orchideen. Mr. Vlodacic. Yeah, I'm not going to say it here in public, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Isn't that impressive? Isn't that just something? Look at these. Ah, we have some work to do, but. She has a new growth and a sheep. And it's a beautiful new growth. And she has another new growth right here. Oh, this is awesome. So this one supposedly has really, really like, you know, the plant is down here and the spikes come all the way like up to there and then they bloom. Oh, I'm happy as Larry. Whoever Larry was that was that happy, I am like him. I'm happy as him and I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to shop with them again one two three four five six you can go in here you won't flop over in here you here Look at that! Oh, is there a new growth here? Just one minute. I'm just removing the top layer of bark so that I don't make a mistake when I fill up the tubs. You can go in here. <laughs> Come here. Look at that. They just disappear. And nobody knows I got anything. Now I just have to hide the box. <laughs> Pretend like nothing ever happened and face away from the wind so that the voice doesn't get carried. Where did that wind suddenly come from? I guess that is, that is proof I shouldn't have been doing what I did. But I am somewhat happy that I did what I did. So I've got my welcome cocktail here and I'm pouring around the pots, not into the pots except for the big ones where I can't really do that. And I'm facing my back towards the wind. This is nuts. Remove the surface tension so that there is hydration. And let's have a look. All right, trying to block myself from the wind. Here's Diana with a Y. I think, what was this one that we took? This is the Sincorana. There. Here is the Unfelsiae. What I'm trying to do is take like a photographic memory shot of my head as I say the names. And this is Lucasiana. And that's how I try to remember them from the moment go when they come in. This one's not that difficult. Dawiana Aurea, with the new growth not in the water. 
There we go. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy. And then you could call this a wish list. I hadn't remembered how much I wanted this orchid now that I've got her. Yeah, I think we can tick the box of wish list done. I don't like this root being so close to the tip with all the jiggling from the wind going on. So we'll take the bark off. Here they are, les newbies for the tubies. <laughs> so I hope that you enjoyed this little unboxing as much as I did. I must say one of the best ever, 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 ever. Thank you Großrechner Orchideen. Love it, love it, love it. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care and I'll see you hopefully next time. Bye.